Uh, good day, my dear students. I would like to present to you my new topic for today, which is about degenerative diseases and patellofemoral pain. First, we begin with the degenerative diseases. Uh, the degeneration process usually occur in almost all the joints of the body, especially in the joints of the, the synovial joints uh, in the lower extremities because usually they bear more weight than the, uh, than the other joints. From a histological point of view, we can see that healing cartilage is composed of many layers. Begin with the most superficial layer, which contains uh, the high concentration of uh, chondrocytes, which, uh, uh, which are parallel to the surface of the joint, and, and usually this layer is responsible for the smooth gliding of the uh, op opposed cartilage layers. Then, uh, when we go when we go down, uh, down deep in the uh, cartilage thickness, we can see the transitional zone and the deep layer with the decrease in the concentration of the cells, chondrocytes, and increase of the matrix composition. Uh, the most or the deepest layer is the calcified layer that lies next to the subchondral bone and to the tight mark. Uh, under, under the microscope we can see the chondrocytes, uh, which are surrounded by the matrix, and we have some, uh, as we see here in the picture, we have some white areas around the uh, chondrocytes, uh, which are caused, uh, co uh, called uh, the lacuna. The chondrocytes usually are responsible for the production of the matrix and the collagen molecules, but they do not show mitotic activity and they have a low metabolism rate. In the matrix, we can see mainly uh, type 2 collagen, which is uh, secreted by the chondrocytes and is embedded by, by many proteins and uh, uh, about 80% uh, of water. Uh, the lacuna usually plays a role as, uh, um, as receptors, cellular receptors, and they contain some kind of cellular receptors that communicate between uh, the chondrocytes. Uh, the haline cartilage in general has uh, many characteristics which are, uh, which are very special. Uh, it has no blood supply, it has no lymph vessels, it, it, it's, uh, uh, and it's not innervated. So uh, the healing process does not uh, usually uh, follow the normal the healing process of the other tissue. And in early life, the hyaline cartilage depends on the subchondral bone for nutrition. But uh, after that, uh, or later on, it depends on the synovial fluid uh, to, uh, to have uh, its nutrition. Uh, and uh, in this, uh, this point is very important because uh, when we have a good synovial fluid, we have a good composition of this synovial fluid, we, we, uh, and a good motion, we can guarantee good nutrition of the uh, hyaline cartilage layer. So the mobility uh, and the application of intermittent pressure on the on the hyaline cartilage can uh, can play a role like a sponge uh, to absorb and excrete and exert the uh, the fluid from the tissue. Uh, the degenerative osteoarthritis uh, can predispose by many factors. Uh, the age, the aging, the increasing age usually uh, is a very important role and it affects all, uh, all the people. The female sex and hormonal factors like uh, the aminuria and the lack of estrogen and, uh, uh, and the hormonal support to, uh, of the tissue can predispose to the degeneration. The race and the hereditary factors usually uh, is responsible for some types, uh, some types of uh, special uh, degenerative osteoarthritis in the knees or in in the hands or inter uh, interphalangeal joints, etc. Uh, some metabolic factors and malnutrition can cause um, uh, early uh, um, early degeneration of the uh, cartilage layer. Uh, 
and which is very important the mechanical factors as obesity as the deformity of the of the extremity surgical injuries and sports uh, um, severe sport activities and muscle uh, overfunction can cause or can predispose a uh, early or degeneration of the uh, articular cartilage uh, there are many pathological changes in degenerative osteoarthritis. First of all, we have cartilage dehydration and a decrease of cellular density. And uh, we have so, uh, some synovial inflammation, inflammatory process and synovial fluid changes. And the secretion, the type of synovial fluid is not uh, as good as the normal uh, joint. Uh, so it has um, a low concentration of, of the nutrients. Uh, as low, low protein contents. But the problem is that the first pathological changes usually are silent. Uh, what are the factors? Uh, the factors uh, lead to the to cartilage degeneration. We have we we can see there there is a lot of metabol uh, modified metabolism uh, because of the secretion of the interleukins and the TNF alpha, and the decrease of matrix production because the chondrocytes are affected by these uh, inflammatory mediators. Uh, but the production of subnormal matrix composition and, uh, and we can see subchondral bone remodeling as we will see later on in the diagram. And the chondrocyte and subsequent chondrocyte death. So because of uh, these changes, we may we may have some uh, small particles ac uh, accumulation in the synovial fluid, and that that are absorbed by the uh, macrophages in the synovial membrane, and which cause uh, increase of the of chondrolysis. The uh, the mechanism is uh, is demonstrated here. Uh, first of all, we have a mechanical force that affect. Uh, or that uh, apply uh, pressure uh, over the normal cartilage or the uh, altered cartilage, which this mechanical force uh, causes modification of metabolism and the secretion and liberation of cytokines uh, as interleu uh, interleukins and some enzyme activation. Uh, as agriganase and metalloprotease, which cause destruction of the proteoglycans. The, these proteins bind the collagen fibers or collagen molecules, and uh, it can guarantee the stability of the joint, uh, the matrix structure. Uh, because of this, uh, we can have hypercatabolism and fragment liberation, which travel or uh, which are uh, uh, spread in the synovial fluid and they are absorbed or phagocytosed or they uh, or they are taken by the lymph uh, the synovial sites and the macrophage in the synovial fluid uh, synovial membrane uh, and can cause a uh, type of, uh, of synovitis as a result of the synovitis we can see the production of cytokines and uh, other metalloproteins thick effect of, on the chondrocytes can cause the secretion of uh, bone morphogenic protein and insulin-like uh, growth factors that cause the activation of osteoblasts in the subchondral bone and they cause uh, bone remodeling and osteophytes formation at the margins of the bones or the joints. The degenerative uh, changes are, uh, are graded into, uh, into five grades, from zero to four, to grade four. Uh, these grades uh, usually are classified uh, according to the changes that happen in the shape uh, of, uh, of the cartilaginous layer. Uh, in grade zero, uh, we, see, we can see the, an intact articular cartilage, which where there is no changes. In grade one, we have some softening and some alteration in the in the shape of the uh, or or the composition uh, of the uh, cartilage layer without uh, without fissurings. Uh, in grade two, we have superficial fissurings. Uh, in grade three, these fissures uh, can and fragmentations can extend into the matrix, but they do not reach the subchondral bone. In grade four, the, these fissures uh, can expose the sub, uh, subchondral bones. 
Uh, always we have an uh, accompanying uh, synovitis with this uh, degeneration in the cartilaginous uh, layer. This synovitis usually is uh, responsible for the pain. Within the changes that happen in the uh, degenerative changes or degeneration, degenerative process, we can see subchondral bone sclerosis and osteophyte formation. If we understand the, uh, the mechanism of the uh, degeneration, we can, uh, we can notice the radiological sign. We can understand more how we can see radiologically the changes of, uh, in uh, degenerative uh, joints. The first radiological sign is the uh, joint space narrowing that results, as we see here, as res uh, which results from the uh, decrease in the thickness of the cartilaginous layer because of the erosions and the liberation of the cartilaginous particles. Then we have some erosions and uh, some uh, bone remodeling sclerosis in this area and the formation of the subchondral cave teeth. And uh, later on, we can see some remodeling in the surfaces. The osteophyte formation, uh, which are caused by the activation of the bone uh, of the osteoblast in the subchondral bone, and the formation of loose bodies, as we as we see here. Sometimes uh, we can see some uh, loose bodies that travels and, and the, uh, that swim in the uh, articular fluid in the joint, and they may cause the locking of the joint of joint mobility. And for sure, because of the synovitis, we can see joint effusion in many cases of degenerative osteoarthritis. Now this, uh, we can notice this uh, changes uh, either clinically uh, or uh, by the use of echography. We can see here uh, the, uh, the visual appearance of uh, the, the degenerative knee during the total knee arthroplasty. Uh, we can see here the, uh, the erosions in the cartilage and the absence of the cartilage layer or the cartilage cover in the medial uh, femoral condyle. And these are the osteophytes that are formed uh, next or at the margins of the bone or the affected bone. The X-ray study is uh, very important to, uh, to diagnose the, the degenerative changes or degenerative osteoarthritis, and it should be done with bait wearing or with erected position in the lower extremity for, um, for sure. Uh, because when we have uh, the patient uh, in erected position or when, we, when he bears weight, the joint space will be more narrowed. And as we see here, the difference between the radiograph in the same, uh, same patient, the radiograph of the knee was taken uh, in lying position and in the standing position. We can see the um, uh, joint space narrowing, which is mild in lying position, and it's more obvious and there's uh, uh, complete loss of joint space in standing position. The real stage or grade of the degenerative osteoarthritis usually is uh, identified according to the uh, standing uh, position. Clinically, we can see a gradual articular pain Usually, this pain is mechanical pain. It's not an inflammatory pain, unless the synovitis is very ob uh, is obvious or severe. Morning stiffness for some t for for some uh, uh, minutes, loss of mobility, gradual loss of mobility, and joint instability because of the osteophytes that push that uh, push the uh, the ligaments around the joints, so they can cause the uh, ligament instability, ligament uh, elongation, and um, subsequent joint instability, joint of effusion, and popping and clicking during examination. The treatment of uh, of degenerative osteoarthritis is composed of uh, two major treatments: either conservative, either uh, surgical treatment. In the conser in conservative treatment, we uh, we can depend a lot of physical therapy. In physical therapy, we we should use decreasing weight, strengthening exercises, uh, changing lifestyle with avoidance 
of uh, the, uh, the increased stress on the over the joint, nice planes to decrease the night pain, and uh, using uh, crutches to decrease the the, the weight uh, over the joint and uh, the weight of the body over the joint, and uh, using infrared, using using wax therapy, etc. Other type of conservative treatments is use of uh, medications, either by uh, injection, injection of cort uh, of steroids to decrease the inflammatory process in, or the synovitis, and the hyaluronic acid to increase uh, the viability of the uh, cartilage, cartilaginous. The other medical treatment of the uh, degenerative osteoarthritis is the use of medications. We can use either local injections, local steroid injections to decrease the uh, inflammatory synovitis, uh, or hyaluronic acid or PR meat platelet rich plasma to. Uh, to enhance or uh, the viability of the uh, control layer. Um, other uh, general medications in peros or injections, either an asteroid, an asteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or, an, uh, or other analgesics, and the use of food supplements uh, like glucosamine and chondroitin, etc., to uh, increase or to uh, alleviate the pain and to increase joint mobility. Recently, um, it has been invented the use of stem cells, uh, either uh, from the bone marrow or, uh, as we see here, from the adipose tissue. We can harvest the, tissue, the, uh, the adipose uh, tissue and separate it. Then activation. In this, uh, in this video, we can see the activation process. We put the harvested adipose tissue in this uh, in this bottle, specialized bottles with metal uh, bees, and we do the activation and the separation of the adipose tissue. At the end, we can harvest or we can take the stem cells concentrate to inject it inject it back in the joint the surgical treatment can play a role in the treatment of um, uh, degenerative osteoarthritis for example in the knee we can see we can do arthroscopy to uh, uh, with using a shaver, with using pun punches to um, uh, uh, remove any irregularity in the joint. It can alleviate the pain, it can improve the joint mobility and the improved pain. Uh, the use of osteotomy to, uh, to change the axis of uh, uh, weight bearing of the joint, uh, to make the weight bearing axis pass from uh, or, or pass through the normal or the least affected part of the joint. Or we can do uh, arthroplasty partial, as we see here, or uh, total arthroplasty of the joint, as we see here in the joint. And uh, the ancient method, surgical method to treat um, uh, to treat degeneration of the knee, for example, is arthrodesis, which is the uh, elimination of the uh, of the um, uh, cartilaginous layer and make a bo a bony artificial bone fusion between the two ends of the joint. So we can uh, we lose the mobility, but we gain the relief of pain. The, usually, um, it's rarely used now.